Hey everybody, I am out here in my driveway, not in Atlanta, Georgia, taking a look at the 2021 Toyota Supra GR. For 2021, Toyota has done something a little bit interesting, and they have given the Supra a decent number of tweaks, even though it was just introduced for the 2020 model year. The big change, of course, is under the hood, where we find more horsepower than we had before, 382 horsepower now, so essentially the same amount of power that we find in the closely related BMW Z4. The other big change is under the hood of this yellow Supra right next to it, because under this hood, we have the first ever four-cylinder engine in a Supra. This is, as you'd expect, a BMW two-liter four-cylinder engine. This one produces 255 horsepower and promises to be the most affordable Supra available in America for 2021. A four-cylinder engine under the hood of the Supra sounds a little bit like sacrilege, but some folks out there were concerned that the three-liter Supra was getting a little bit too expensive. So this should definitely lower the price tag. We don't know exact pricing yet. We will know that in June, but at the moment, I expect the price tag to be probably about $10,000 or so less. That should put the two-liter Supra right around the low 40s as far as an overall starting price. Obviously, we're going to get less power out of the two-liter Supra, but if you want to do some extensive engine modifications, Toyota says that there's definitely definitely room under here. You can definitely see there's an awful lot of room under there. So if you, for some reason, wanted to go absolutely fast and furious crazy with your Supra, the two liter might be a slightly better option. Under this hood, we have a new BMW engine. Yes, you heard that right, BMW engine. As you've probably heard, BMW and Toyota teamed up to make the Z4 and the Supra together. You'll also see one of the other changes. We have these new strut bars right here. These help improve overall rigidity. But the big change is the engine because this now uses essentially the same inline six that we find in the BMW Z4, producing the same amount of power as the Z4 with just a touch less torque. That should be good for a zero to 60 improvement of about two tenths of a second, according to Toyota, and that's just about the limit of the amount of power you really want to be delivering with pure rear wheel drive, especially out here in the rain. And now we need to talk about the BMW Toyota hookup. The Supra and the Z4 are sister ships. This is essentially the coupe version of the Z4. The Z4 is the convertible version of the Supra. How is this going down? Well, Toyota basically provided a ton of cash because BMW said that if it wasn't for Toyota, the Z4 wouldn't exist. And Toyota said if it wasn't for BMW and their available parts catalog, the Supra wouldn't exist. So if you aren't happy with the BMW Supra arrangement, you have to ask yourself, would you just rather not have a Supra at all? Because the reality is, if we didn't have both of them, we would have neither of them. And these two vehicles are interestingly enough designed to compete very directly with certain Porsche models, the Boxster and the Cayman especially. According to Toyota, it would have been too expensive to try and adapt Lexus turbo engines or Toyota turbo engines to this particular platform. They didn't have an inline six that would really work well with this particular vehicle. They wanted something that's smaller, so the Lexus twin turbo V6 didn't seem like an appropriate choice, they said. It also made development less expensive for both companies, and again, more likely to happen. This is exactly the same thing that we see with the Toyota 86 and the Subaru BRZ collaboration. So at the moment, if you want a pure in-house developed Toyota sports car, you're going to have to look inside the Lexus lineup. But the rumor mill tells us that the next generation Lexus vehicles, rear wheel drive platforms and engines may actually be co-developed as well. That's just the reality in our modern automotive landscape. Up front, we don't really have any visual differentiators between the two liter turbo and the three liter turbo. I have to admit, I kind of wish that there was something a little bit more distinctive about the three liter model or more distinctive about the two liter model just to help differentiate the two from one another. Really the only difference between these two is what we're gonna see out back. So up front, this definitely has the look of all the super concepts that we've seen before. I have to admit that when this model first launched, I thought that some of the preliminary pictures made it look a little bit too squished, a little bit too narrow overall, but I think that in person, the Supra really does look pretty good. At 172.5 inches long, this is almost exactly the same length as the Porsche competition, but you can see that the overall profile is distinctly different. We have that long hood proportion that's enabled by that inline six engine. We have some strong haunches in the rear. Definitely, this looks like a rear wheel drive aggressive sports car, and I have to admit, I like the look overall. This is a little bit longer than the Roadster version, mainly due to the overall front bumper design and a little bit of bumper tweaks out in the rear, but the wheelbase is essentially the same. The wheelbase and the overall proportions are why they needed a dedicated platform to create the Super on. They couldn't have just taken, for instance, a Lexus RC platform and create this because it wouldn't have looked the same. It wouldn't have this extremely long hood proportion. They wouldn't have been able to push the driver's seat as far back 
And then the wheelbase is a little bit too long in that Lexus RC as well. So it just would have looked a little bit funny. The overall proportion is quite different than a mid-engine car like a Porsche, or of course a four seat or a two plus two coupe that would have some tiny seats back there and have a slightly longer body. Let's dive into the engines again in a little bit more detail. Again, this is a new three liter inline six engine, produces 382 horsepower. That's a pretty decent bump over the last Supra we tested, which had 335 horsepower. There were some rumors out there that perhaps in the Toyota BMW arrangement that Toyota wasn't allowed to have as much power as the Z4. Toyota tells us that that wasn't the case. They just didn't feel like this engine was quite ready for them yet. So now we have that under the hood. Again, we have those strut braces right there. We also have a ZF eight speed automatic transmission which is one of the best eight-speed automatics out there. I have to say that I do like the ZF eight-speed a bit more than the Toyota Lexus eight-speed that we see in a number of their vehicles. And then back under this hood, two liter turbocharged engine, 255 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. And overall, this Super weighs about 200 pounds less than the three liter model. The engine accounts for some of that weight loss, obviously, and we do lose some of the weight right there in front of the front axle. So I suspect that the two liter Supra may have a very slight rear weight bias. We don't know for sure, however, because Toyota tells us that they've taken out weight everywhere in the vehicle. Instead of power seats, we have manual seats. We don't have the active differential in the rear. We don't have the active suspension system and they've removed a few other components. You'll notice that we don't have those same strut braces like we see over here in the three liter model either. The weight reduction means that the two liter Supra is not as slow as you might think. According to the manufacturer, this should go zero to 60 in five seconds even. This model right over here obviously is faster. 3.9 seconds is now the manufacturer quoted time. But as we have seen with these engines in other products, they do go faster in reality. And obviously we're gonna talk about that in the drive section, but 5.0, 3.9, you should expect them to go a little bit faster zero to 60, assuming it's not wet outside like it is right now. The Supra is one of the few Toyota models for 2021 that does not have their standard Toyota Safety Sense package. Now, obviously, since they've borrowed all the electronics from the BMW parts bin, this doesn't have any of Toyota's safety systems technically, but they function in basically the same way. What's interesting, I think, is that they didn't make most of these systems standard. So radar adaptive cruise control with autonomous braking, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic detection, et cetera, those are all optional. They're not standard on the Supra, like you do find in most of Toyota's lineup. Hopping into the driver's seat of the two liter model, you notice we don't have the all power seat that we find in the three liter model. But I have to say this seat is just as comfortable because it is just as adjustable. We still have inflatable bolsters. We still have a four way lumbar support. You can still adjust the tilt of the seat, bottom cushion, etc. This is one of the most comfortable manual seats I've ever sat in because of its adjustability. Obviously it scoots forward and backward and reclines as well. We also have a manual tilt telescopic steering column with a pretty large range of motion. You'll also notice that the passenger seat has exactly the same range of motion as the driver's seat, including the four-way adjustable lumbar support and the inflatable side cushions. That's definitely a really nice touch. These seats are a little bit different than the ones in the three liter model. We have these Alcatar inserts with red dots on them. In the dashboard, we still have the last generation BMW iDrive system rather than one of Toyota's or Lexus's systems. I also have to say that this makes the interior feel a bit more premium than if we had simply had the Toyota infotainment system as well. iDrive is one of my favorite infotainment systems in the luxury segment. It does support Apple CarPlay only. However, if you are interested in Android Auto, you won't find that on that screen. The controls also again straight out of BMW's parts bin for simplicity and cost control. These buttons are physical buttons but they also have a touch functionality so you can run your finger along them and actually see what that button was going to do up there in the infotainment system. We don't have all of the same options in there that we see in the three liter model. We don't have all the same sort of performance options but down here we have dual zone automatic climate control. There's a single USB port right there. The entire system is controlled via this controller right here or the touchscreen. You have the option of using either one of those. Here we have a BMW shifter. Drive is back there, manual mode over to the right, just as you'd expect. There are paddles on the back of the steering wheel. Sport button right there, pretty simple overall. You can configure individual settings for steering, engine, and transmission. You'll notice that we don't have all the same options that we find in the three liter turbo there either. The instrument cluster is the same full LCD that we find in the three liter model. One thing I've noticed is that this side of the instrument cluster is not used very much, although the rest of it is definitely a very attractive and sporty looking design. Moving out from there, we have essentially a BMW steering wheel with a Toyota logo on it, paddle shifters on the back, down on the left, up over there on the right. The radar adaptive cruise control buttons are over here on this side. 
Toyota is treating the base engine in the Supra a little bit differently than we see, for instance, base engines in luxury cars, because it's a little bit more common in a Lexus to be able to get a base or smaller or less powerful engine with all the same kind of features and functions that we see in the more powerful engine options, but we're not seeing that in the Supra. The two liter model definitely is the base trim. Moving to the rear, you'll notice that the Supra is a lift back, and underneath the lift back, we have under 10 cubic feet of storage space. This is not a terribly big trunk, and interestingly enough, it is open to the passenger compartment. So, for instance, if I remove this hard cargo divider, it's also a hard cargo divider, which is not my preference. I prefer one of the roller variety. This is going to be a little bit quieter, but it is a a bit more difficult to remove than, of course, obviously you've got to stick this somewhere and there's no place in the cargo area to put it, but you'll notice that the cargo area is open to the passenger area in the vehicle. That's just due to the overall design and the fact this was designed to be both a roadster and a two-door coupe. I hope everybody is staying safe. Between the cargo area and passenger area, we have that twin subwoofer set up right back there. We do have a JBL audio system available in the Supra that is a little bit different, of course, than luxury entries that would generally have Harman Kardon systems or up-level optional audio systems. Now, if we close the lids on both of these guys, you'll notice that the rear ends look nearly identical. Again, there's no real way to differentiate the three liter from the two liter, except for these exhaust tips right down here at the bottom. The three liter is over here in white. We get slightly larger exhaust tips, slightly smaller ones over here on the two liter turbo. But other than that, the rear ends look definitely identical. I think that two liter shoppers will be very happy with this, but three liter shoppers might wish for something that was a little bit more special over here in the more expensive model. Now it's time to go for a drive. And one of the first First things you'll notice is that the roof line in the Supra is definitely very, very low. Getting in and out of this vehicle could be a challenge for someone that has more of a mobility issue, so definitely keep that in mind. It's going to be easier to get into something like a Mustang or a Camaro or, of course, a Dodge Challenger. The next thing you're going to notice when we start the vehicle up is we get those BMW tones, not Toyota tones, and of course we have that excellent 3-liter inline 6 exhaust note here. Of course, if you get the 2-liter turbo, then we get a very different exhaust note. As you'd expect with more power under the hood, zero to 60 is definitely faster than the last Super that we tested. 3.7 seconds is what I clocked in the model that we're driving here, which is of course the three liter turbo first. Now about that zero to 60 time, this is a rear wheel drive vehicle. And right now I would not be able to get 3.7 seconds zero to 60 because the road is a little on the damp side. It was just raining all night long. That zero to 60 time happened on a relatively warm day, very flat land, and it took a lot of tries to really get that 3.7 seconds dialed in because traction is clearly an issue when we're talking about a two wheel drive vehicle. I would say that this is about as much power as this particular configuration can handle. If you're planning on modifying your Supra, then you're definitely gonna need to do more than just add more power. You're gonna need to do something about the traction in the rear, grippier tires, wider tires, etc. Getting the numbers out of the way, going from 60 miles an hour back to zero, took just 98 feet. This is one of the shortest stopping vehicles that we've ever tested here at Alex and Autos. And that's all down to the light curb weight. This is notably lighter than a naturally aspirated V8 competitor would be. Light curb weight and just general turbocharged nature are why the Super has always been so much fun. And this model is no different. We get absolutely incredible amounts of power, definitely fast zero to 60 times. The eight speed automatic transmission is definitely a team player as well. ZF's eight speed automatic is one of my absolute favorite transmissions ever. Only I think bested by their previous generation six speed automatic transmission. This definitely shifts faster, for instance, than the transmission that we find in the Lexus RCF. When it comes to overall handling, the Supra is clearly gonna get an A. I was able to test the pre-refresh Supra out on a track. It is an awful lot of fun. This particular model, I've been able to drive at home on roads that I'm much more familiar with, and you can tell that the nuance is definitely there in the steering, in the way the vehicle responds, etc. Now, we don't have quite as much steering feel as you'd find in a previous generation Supra, unfortunately, because this does have electric power steering, not hydraulic power steering. So if you're interested in steering feel, this is going to be behind any of the previous generations of Supra, but it's very good for a modern car for 2021. 
Out on a rougher road like the gravel road that we're on here, I really appreciate the adaptive suspension system because if I move this over to, for instance, uh, the sport mode here, you will definitely notice that things get a little bit stiffer. Using the individual mode in the infotainment system, you can of course configure exactly which options you want to be in sport mode. So if you want softer damping, but you want the sport suspension, sport engine, sport transmission, etc., that's an option available. Aside from the light drone that we get from the exhaust system back there, the cabin's also pretty quiet. 72 decibels is what we recorded in both the 3 liter turbo and the 2 liter turbo. As long as your foot wasn't on the gas in the 3 liter turbo, then we get an extra decibel in here just because of that exhaust note. One of the best things about the Supra is the overall driving position. The driver and the front passenger are positioned practically above the rear axle. This is a feeling that we also get in Mercedes small roadsters. Because of the seating position, as you're driving this harder out on your favorite winding mountain road or out on a track, it practically feels like the world is turning around you. That's one of the best things about a sports car of this design, and something that we don't see quite the same way in the Porsche product line. Speaking of Porsches, comparisons are a little bit tricky, of course, because the competitors to this are mid-engined Porsches, not the rear-engined 911. And those have a different driving dynamic than we find in the 911 or than we find in this. They're not as rear-heavy as a 911, but they're not as well-balanced as the Supra. The Supra with the inline six has a near-perfect 50-50 weight balance, and we're told essentially a similar weight balance in the two-liter turbo as well. And you'll really feel this out on your favorite road, because we get wider tires in the rear, slightly narrower tires up front in this model. Let's help you apply that power in the corner, but it definitely has a very nicely balanced feel to it. Out on the road, the two liter turbo model is still definitely very eager. We went zero to 60 in this model in 4.9 seconds, just a hair faster than Toyota says that this model should go. And you'll really notice that this has a lighter overall feel than the three liter model. That surprised me a bit because they're really only about 200 pounds apart in terms of overall curb weight. And according to Toyota, that curb weight does not just get removed up front. Again, it gets removed all the way around the vehicle. So I hadn't expected this to feel as eager to turn as it really does. And this definitely feels a little bit more eager on the turn in than the three liter model. Unfortunately, some of that light weighting also happens in the braking system, and that extends out the braking distances. 108 for this version, that's 10 feet longer than the three liter model. Although I haven't been able to test this, if you are planning on tracking your Supra, you should know that brake fade is probably also gonna be a little bit worse than the two liter model because of the light weighted braking components. But overall handling is definitely very similar, and I have to admit that in a pure handling standoff, I might get the two liter turbo over the three liter model. Clearly I'm not talking about power. This has a lot less power. So if you're really powering the vehicle through those corners or looking for the ultimate drift Supra, that's not gonna be the two liter model. But I do like the way this feels out on the road. It also is a lot easier to just access the power because with the three liter model, traction is definitely an issue. And with this two liter model, if I were to just stop right here on the road and, uh, and then floor it again, you definitely get more turbo lag than we find in the three liter model. We get good acceleration, but we don't have any wheel slip. Even out on this road surface that is a little bit moist, it's not quite as wet as when we drove the three liter model out here on the road, but it's still definitely moist, no traction issues. And with the three liter model, there is a lot of squealing going on in the back. Back out on the same gravel road, you'll notice that the non-adaptive suspension in the Supra is tuned somewhere between the sport and the normal setting in the three liter Supra that has the adaptive suspension. That makes a lot of sense. And of course, if you're looking for a middle of the road option or an option that's gonna cost less in long-term maintenance, then this may be an excellent option for you. The two liter Supra is simpler overall. Not only do we have fewer cylinders, but we don't have all the same kind of features and gadgets that we see in the three liter model. We don't have the power seats. We don't have that active rear differential. We don't have the adaptive suspension, etc. The two liter turbo version of the Supra is the more pragmatic Supra. It's the more efficient Supra. We've been averaging 29 miles per gallon over a week of mixed driving, although we did get above the EPA score in the three liter turbo as well. This is definitely gonna be the more efficient model. It also is a little bit quieter on the inside. Now in steady state travel, we got 50 decibels in both models. However, in this model, when you're under throttle, it is definitely quieter than in the three liter turbo. It's just the way the exhaust system is tuned. The two liter engine doesn't feel as eager, even when we shift this over to the sport mode. You'll definitely notice that we get a lot of thrust, but there's certainly more turbo lag than we find in the three liter model. But as I said before, not everything is muted in the two liter model because I like the way this handles a bit more than the three liter. It feels a 
little bit more nimble, a little bit more chuckable out on your favorite mountain road. And I also like the way that this regular steel spring suspension works rather than the adaptive suspension in the 3 liter model. I love adaptive suspensions, don't get me wrong, but this one is tuned very well. And I think this is a good balance between performance suspension tuning and a daily driver livable vehicle. Bottom line of these two vehicles is a bit tricky because clearly if I could afford more power, I would want the more power. I would want the 3 liter version of the Supra. But that does not make the base 2 liter engine a penalty box because again, this still has a few things going for it. Unfortunately, exact pricing is a little bit of a secret for 2021. I know how much the four cylinder is going to cost, but I can't share that with you until June. This is going to be in the low 40,000s, however, that's a pretty safe bet, and it is going to be notably less expensive than the three liter version of the Supra. Comparisons are pretty tricky with the Supra because there isn't really anything else like this, especially in the mainstream category. Now, when you start taking a look at luxury vehicles, obviously we have the Porsche, we have the BMW, but they're not direct competitors to something with a Toyota a logo on it in some people's minds. Now obviously the Supra has always punched above its weight, above the average Toyota in terms of overall performance, and that continues for the Supra whether we're talking about the 2 liter model or the 3 liter model. But this is not really the same category as a Mustang or a Camaro, it really is quite a different vehicle. Again, the benchmark was a Porsche. The biggest difference between this and a Mustang and a Camaro, of course, is going to be overall refinement, whether we're talking about the way this rides, the way it drives, the way it accelerates, or just the way the interior makes you feel. This really does feel like a luxury vehicle. I'm surprised in a way that this didn't end up being a Lexus, but they really wanted to bring back the Supra name, and that did sort of make sense to them. Now, if it had been a Lexus, then interestingly enough, it would have been a little bit closer of a competitor to the other coupe that is sharing my driveway this week, a 2020 Infiniti Q60 Red Sport. That has 400 horsepower under the hood. It's also a two-door vehicle. It is a luxury branded vehicle, but it has two extra seats versus the Supra. And it is notably slower, interestingly enough, in the zero to 60 time. Some of that has to do with the overall weight. Some of that has to do with the seven speed automatic transmission versus the eight speed automatic that we find in this. But any way you slice it, a bigger coupe like the Q60, like the Audi A5, like a BMW 4 Series or a Mercedes-Benz C-Class coupe is just not going to be the same kind of fun that you can get in a Supra. But that brings us along to the other Supra in the driveway, of course, this big yellow Supra and the 2-liter turbocharged engine that we find under the hood. Can a 2-liter turbo make a good sports car? Can it make a Supra? And I have to dissect that question a little bit because in some ways I have to agree with the fans that say a real Supra shouldn't have a 2-liter four-cylinder engine under the hood. This is not as exciting sounding. It is not as powerful as the Supra. This is the rational Supra. And should a Supra be rational? I'm not quite sure about that. This has the ability to apply all that power, whereas the three liter turbo version of the Supra definitely has troubles applying all that power with the rear tires. There's a lot of wheel slip in all sorts of situations. This comes across as much more modest. It's a lot easier to handle. It is definitely lighter, a little bit more nimble, a little bit more fun in that way out on the road, but it's not quite as crazy as the three liter Supra. And when I'm looking at a sports car, I kind of want a little bit of crazy. But in my mind, there's something else to consider. This two liter turbo version of the Supra is not gonna be that much more expensive in real terms than the average transaction price on a Honda Civic Type R. Now, clearly that is truly a Japanese performance vehicle, and this is something of a Japanese-German hybrid, but in my mind, this is still a rational upgrade from something like that Honda Civic Type R. We get the rear wheel drive dynamics that people are interested in. We get a lot of interior refinement, and this is still an awful lot of fun. It is also notably faster than that Civic Type R, even though we get less horsepower under the hood. That's simply because this vehicle can apply all that power to the ground more easily. Clearly, it's not gonna be a hatchback. It's not gonna be a five-seater. We have a two-seat vehicle only. But someone that's looking at something along the lines of a Golf R or a Honda Civic Type R, uh, but wants a little bit more refinement than you'd find in a V8 Mustang, they should definitely put the Super on their list. And the two liter turbo is not going to be that bad of an option down there. But for the purists, I have to agree, this may not really be a real Supra. 
But when it comes to the three liter version of the Supra, the purists are wrong, and this is a true Supra, and it's a ton of fun out on the road. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below, and let me know what would you get? Would you get the more rational two liter Supra, or would you get the more fun three liter Supra, even though it's gonna cost an awful lot more? Be sure and head over to facebook.com slash so you can see what we're driving this week, and if you wanna see the lighter side of things, you can find me over at Instagram as well. I'll see all of you later.